Good morning, third graders. It's been a really long time since we've seen each other. Um, Mr. Gillen and I miss you guys terribly. We hope you are staying safe and staying healthy at home. We hope that you're also enjoying your assignments that you're getting on Google Classroom. We've been really impressed with all of your answers and your participation. Uh, this week, we're gonna try to read the rest of Just a Drop of Water. Um, we only have a few chapters left and we kind of ended the school year and we weren't able to finish it. So um, each day I'm gonna read a chapter. We just want you guys to listen to the story, think about what's happening, think about what's happened. Um, just kind of a recap because it has been a really long time since we've read it. We still don't know where Sam's dad is. Um, remember he was taken away by the FBI, we think, because of the terrorist attack that happened um, on 9-11. And so they're trying to look for him. Jake has been contacting his uncle to try to see if his uncle can find him. That has yet to succeed. Um, so we don't know where he is yet. We hope that, he, you know, Sam's dad is safe. Sam is still not back at school. He's been going to um, worship every day. Uh, remember, he found out that he's Islamic. So he's he's been going and he's been praying, but he hasn't been going to school. So um, Jake is trying to convince Sam to come back. They have a big race. He wants them to be at school. They're also planning that peace rally. And so they're trying to come up with ideas to spread peace as opposed to um, spread hurtful words and things like that. So we are on chapter 21, um, September 27th, 2001. So it's been you know two and a half weeks since, almost three weeks since the 9-11 attack. Um, so let's kind of see what happens from here. Dad shakes me. Jake, get up. You're going to be late. I pull the covers tighter around my neck, but he yanks them off. Get up. I forgot to wake you. I look at the clock. It's 825. Last night, I looked up Uncle Hugh's cell number and Mom's phone and called him, but he didn't answer. I was hoping he'd call back before school today. Where's Mom? She left for work already. You need to hurry. I throw on my mangrove jersey and my eagle's hat, skip breakfast, and wait for Dad in the car. I scan the sidewalks along the way, hoping to spot Sam. We need him to race today, but I don't see him, and even in school, he's a no-show again, some teammate. We spend the first 20 minutes of social studies class making sure everyone's on track for the event tomorrow. Katie says, I had a great idea last night. We should make buttons. Mrs. Cruz adds button to her list. What kind? They'll be red, white, and blue and read, United We Stand. I think about me and Sam, about Bobby, about Mom's feeling toward the Medinas, about the attacks, and about Mr. Medina being hauled away. We're definitely not standing united. What a joke. I must have scoffed out loud because Mrs. Cruz looks at me and asks, Is there something wrong, Jake? I just shake my head. You're allowed to say something if you disagree. I look at Katie. No offense, but that's a stupid saying. We're definitely not united. Katie puts her hands on her hips. What planet do you live on? Haven't you been outside? Just look around. There are flags being sold on every street corner and practically every car and house has one flying from it. There are patriotic banners everywhere. Everyone's so nice to each other. Everyone stops to talk to each other. It's never been like that before. I shake my head again. I don't agree. Bobby speaks up. What Katie means is that Americans are united. Not everyone who lives here is an American. Rigo snorts. My stomach lurches. I try to shut out his voice and sit on my hands. Mrs. Cruz eyes Bobby and then says, Katie, I like that idea, but let's take it a bit further. Do you know what the full saying is? It's not just united we stand. Katie shakes her head. Mrs. Cruz sits on the edge of her desk. It comes from an old Revolutionary War song. I think the words went something like, hold hands, brave Americans all, by united, uniting we stand, by dividing we fall. The phrase is more like advice rather than a simple statement. Katie nods, well, we can put the whole slogan on the button then. It will tell people that we're asking them to stick together. Great, Mrs. Cruz points to the board. Now, let's draw names for our peace basketball teams. I've limited it to eighth graders only. The rest of the school can watch. If you signed up, your name is in the hat. She writes peace players on one side of the board and freedom fighters on the other. I snicker quietly. Freedom fighters for a peace rally. That's a good one. When she's done, there are 12 kids in the first column. Matt and Rigo are both on the peace players team. 
The second column has 11 names. One is Bobby's. Bobby stands and motions to the board. Go ahead and put a star next to my name. I'll be the team captain. I let out a f and Bobby's in my face instantly. He spits his words. You think that's funny? For the fourth time, Mrs. Cruz steps between us. That's enough. He backs away. I don't see your name up there, Jake. Too scared to play against me? Unlike the past times, I feel nothing when he says this to me. He's not my enemy anymore. There is no war between us. I'm surrendering. No, I'm not scared. I just don't care. I turn to Mrs. Cruz. And I'm not staying with and I'm staying with my grandma this weekend, so I actually can't come to the rally. Bobby doubles over with a maniacal laughter. So you're going to run and hide? I wonder if you'll sprint faster than Sam did when he left the park that morning. Amber and I both jump out of our seats, but it's Amber who yells at him. Don't ever go near or talk to or about my brother again. Out, Mrs. Cruz grabs Bobby by the arm. Now. The hair on my neck stands up. My heart is pulsing in my ears, in my throat, and in my wrists. I close my eyes, but all I see is Sam on the ground with blood oozing from his nose. I want to hit Bobby more than anything right now, but I think about Grandpa. This has to stop. I rush to the board. Fine, I'll play. I erase Rigo's name from the Peace Players and put him as a freedom fighter with Bobby. I add my name to the Peace Players team. Bobby smirks. So much for Grandma's. Mrs. Cruz hands him a referral and sends him to the office. The battle for peace is on. I'm pretty sure my literature teacher would call this an oxymoron. In gym class, Coach Rehart unlocks my supply closet for me. He get the bag of footballs and meet us at the field. I grab the bag from the storage closet and am headed for the locker room bench when I hear Bobby's voice. It'll be the perfect time. Everyone will be at the rally. I thought he'd get in school suspension when Mrs. Cruz kicked him out earlier, but I guess not. I hear a slap. High five? I slip back into the closet so he and whoever else is with him won't see me. Rigo's voice bounces off the walls. You don't think it's too close. There's going to be cops all around the school. Bobby says, it's perfect that it's just down the street. We can show up here, slip out during the introduction, and be back before the game starts. No one will even know we're gone. Rigo says, well, what about the stuff? We'll stash some of it in the bushes before the rally starts. Rigo laughs. We should get black ski masks, too. I barely breathe. I'm afraid I might give myself away. Bobby says, that's cool. Much faster than face paint. There's silence for a second. Do you have any masks? Rigo says, I can bring two. What about you? Bobby asks. No one answers. Who's he talking to? I hear feet shuffling. You in or what? Bobby's voice booms. I don't know, man. Matt, maybe? Chickening out? I never said I was in. Shuffle, shuffle. A locker slams. Bobby says, you're such a loser. You better not say a word or I'll be at your house so fast. I inch forward and steal a glance around the locker, hoping they don't plan to punch Matt because I'm sure I'd, not sure I'd be able to walk away. Matt's backing away. Look, I'm not going to say anything. I just don't want to be a part of it. Bobby says, whatever, let's get out of here before Coach comes looking for us. I duck back into the supply closet. Bobby, Rigo, and Matt push through the metal door that leads to the track. My pulse spazzes. What are they up to? I shake my head. It doesn't matter. It's not my problem. I pace the closet floor, walk away, let it go. I can't stay here at school. If I do, I'll get in trouble because all I want to do is beat the lights out of Bobby till he tells me what he's planning but I can't get involved. I have to get away. I escape out the back over the school fence and run through the park. I'm moving, but have no clue where to go. I remember Sam on the ground in this very spot and him walking away when Bobby hit him. I keep running, and unfortunately, I keep thinking. The newspaper stated that the passengers on the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania beat up the hijackers. They didn't just sit there. Then again, they were stuck on the plane, trapped. But what if they could have walked away? parachuted out and saved themselves. I wonder if they would have or if they still would have fought for what was right. I run past the fire station. I jump over a bus stop bench and dodge a crowd of people in front of the art museum. Sweat pours down my face, but I don't stop until I'm in front of City Hall, a solid four miles from school. The Florida House of Representatives seal greets me as I enter Uncle Hugh's office. Mom's chair is empty and I hunch over and rest my hands on my knees as Uncle Hugh comes out of his office. Ido, you can't be in the video. Come in. <laughs> Cute.
he wants to read too. Jake, he rushes at me. What's the matter? Is everything all right? I pant. Yeah. He leads me to a chair off to the side of the room and brings me some water. I need you to help me with something, please. Why aren't you in school? You know my friend Sam? His dad was taken away by the FBI. They're Muslim. He exhales long and slow. I thought something happened to you. Once I can breathe normal again, I spill everything. Look, my friend's dad needs help. He's been gone over a week and he didn't do anything wrong. I need to know if he's okay and where he is. His family is so worried. I see. Is this why you called? Why did they take him? If it's the FBI, I'm sure they had good reason. But that's it. They had no reason. Mr. Medina works at a bank. He was doing his job by helping Ada when he came into the bank for money. That's what he's supposed to do, help the customers. The FBI didn't arrest him for helping anyone else. They told his family it's because of his immigration papers. But I don't think, I just think that's an excuse. It's probably more complicated than you think, Jake. I throw my hands in the air. Are you serious? Dogs. I didn't say I agree with it, only that it's probably complicated. We're in a different place now than we were three weeks ago. Everyone has a heightened sense of fear, distrust, and it's hard to know who's been helping these terrorists along the way. It's the FBI's job to be thorough. But Mr. Medina didn't do anything wrong. Well, probably not, and they'll find that out. I rest my head back on the wall and sigh. When? He stands and heads towards his office. Does your mother know you're asking me to help you with this? I look at the floor. Well, she's got enough on her plate right now. I assume you're only asking me so that you can tell your friend that his family's okay, right? I jump up, I swear. Hang tight then, let me see what I can find. He closes his office door. I want to stick my ear to the wall and listen, but he's the first person actually willing to help. So I go and sit quietly in mom's chair and spin, counting the rotations. I used to be able to do 17. After only six spins, I grab her desk because the room is circling out of control. When my head clears, I happen to glance at her calendar. 10 a.m., Dr. Trainer. I have no clue who that is. I flip back to the day before. Wednesday, 2 p.m., Dr. Trainer. Tuesday, 1.30 p.m., Dr. Trainer. Monday, 10 a.m., Dr. Trainer, corner of Sable Palm and State Road, 7 Suite 200. Is Mom sick? Dying? Is that why Dad took this week off and why Grandma stayed with us? Why didn't anyone tell me? <clears throat> I need to get home to find Mom. I jump from my seat. Mom opens the front door to the office. Jake, what? I run and throw my arms around her. Mom, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. She pushes me back and inspects my face. What's going on? Why aren't you in school? Are you sick? Just tell me. I can handle it. I'll clean my room every day and clean the house too. You have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Just... She shakes me. What are you talking about? I'm not sick. But your calendar says Dr. Trainer, and you went to him four times this week. Oh. <clears throat> she goes behind her desk and puts her purse away. That. You really shouldn't be reading my personal stuff. And why aren't you in school? You can't ignore my question. Who is Dr. Trainer? Why did you go to the doctor so many times? She smooths her hair. Because, because everything that's been going on lately is making me scared. More scared than usual. Dr. Trainer is a therapist, a personal friend of Uncle Hugh's. He's trying to help me sort through things. The tenses, tenseness in me fades. I hug her again, feeling a great sense of relief. When I let go, I look at her. Is it working? She nods. Well, it definitely feels good to talk about it. Maybe we should try that at, more at home, too. Does that mean we can talk about the Medinas again? Mom's lips pull into a thin line. After a few minutes, she says, I know they're not bad people, but I still can't get involved. I just can't. You don't understand, but I need you to stop asking me to help them. This is what Grandma meant. I can't make Mom be any different. All right, but how come you expect me to change? Sam's my best friend. Or at least he was. I don't, and that was not fair of me. I'm not telling you to let this go anymore, and I will check in with Mrs. Medina soon, but I'm not getting involved with what's going on with Mr. Medina. That's the FBI's job, not mine. Deal? Shocked wouldn't even be close to describing what I feel. I make her shake on it before she changes her mind. Deal. 
She sighs. I wish you could have met your grandpa. Yeah, me too. Mom suddenly grabs my hand and says, Some days I wish I'd never named you after him. It's so hard for me. I guess it wouldn't have mattered, though, because when I look at your face, I see him every single day. You're just as stubborn as I remember him being, but mostly you have his astute sense of right and wrong. I'm almost speechless and let her words sink in slowly. I'm named after him? I thought his name was Richard. Richard Jake. Does it mean anything special? My... Mom looks right into my eyes. Yeah, it means the greatest man who ever lived. Forget supplanter. I'm named after the greatest man who's ever lived. There's nothing better than that. And maybe I did replace someone after all. The difference, though, is your grandpa wouldn't be skipping school or getting in fights. You keep getting yourself into more and more trouble. She shakes her head. I know, and I'm trying to fix that. Well, it looks like we both have stuff to work on. It's going to take me a long time to get back to a good place, but I'm really trying, Jake. I hug her again. Me too, Mom. She squeezes me and then pulls back. You can help me with one important thing tonight. Anything. What's the Medina's favorite dessert? We've got some baking to do. Uncle Hugh sticks his hands in his pockets as he comes out of his office. He looks at me and I think he's nervous about Mom being there. She sorts the mail. For goodness sake, Hugh, tell the boy what he wants to know. I brace myself. I always figured the FBI would realize Mr. Medina was innocent, but all of a sudden I feel sick. What if someone set him up and he looks too guilty for them to let him go? Uncle Hugh says, I don't know much right now. I put a call in to one of my colleagues, a senator in Washington, D.C. Since this is a federal issue, she has more clout than I do. I explain the situation and she's going to check into it. I promise I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything. He comes over and gives me a hug. You're a great friend. Sam's very lucky to have you. Yeah, well, Sam doesn't think so. I tell Uncle Hugh thanks as Mom grabs her keys. Hugh, I'll be back in a few. I need to take Jake to school. The lunch lady slops mashed up something on a bun and scoops pink carrots into the empty square on my paper tray. Disgusting. Sam would have had a funny comment about it endangering the human race or something. Man, do I miss him. Matt is sitting by himself. I make eye contact and he nods at me. Bobby and Rigo are just a few tables away and I wonder if they ditched Matt because of what happened in the locker room. I walk towards him. Can I sit here? He stands. Sure, I was just leaving. I, I have to meet Mrs. Cruz to help her with something for tomorrow night. Never mind then. I turn around and head to my no normal table. Coach Rehart hands me an envelope when I get to the locker room after school. Someone left this for you in the front office. In the top corner is printed Representative Hugh M. Baldwin. I rush to my locker before I rip it open. Jake, there was a misunderstanding. Something about his immigration papers, but everything's been cleared up. Mr. Medina should be home sometime this weekend. I promise I let you know as soon as I heard something. Signed, Uncle Hugh. I shove my face inside my locker. My throat burns and my nose is clogged. I fumble around for a shirt, a towel, anything. I cover my eyes and it takes everything in me not to sob out loud with relief. He's coming home. I'm going to go ahead and stop right there, third grade. Um, it's a really, really long chapter. There's still about 13 pages left. Um, so just kind of be thinking about um, the struggle that Jake has gone through to trying to help his friend Sam and think about what Sam has gone through now that his, um, you know, his dad was taken away from him. Sam doesn't know yet that he's okay. So, um, maybe make a prediction. What do you think? How is Jake going to tell Sam about his dad? How would you, if you had good news for a friend, how would you go about telling that friend, um, really, really good news? So, just be kind of thinking about it. I will hop back on tomorrow and I will read the rest of the chapter um, tomorrow. So go ahead, take a listen, get the rest of your um, Google Classroom assignments done. I know Mr. Galen was posting those as well. We are super impressed with the amount of Lexia minutes and then Dreambox lessons that you guys have been completing and that's really awesome. Mr. Galen and I are even having a really hard time keeping up um, like the lessons. So we've been trying to assign you Dreambox lessons still, and it's hard for us to keep up, <clears throat> excuse me, because 
you've been doing it uh, so often and have really been working really hard. So again, we're super impressed. We're very proud of everything that you guys have done. We loved the pictures of the forts that you guys made. Um, those were super cool. So look for maybe another challenge this week coming up and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.